Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. I hope you're all having a really wonderful day thus far, a fantastic Friday. And so uh, we'll be taking a look at what is going on across the Caribbean, of course, but we'll be focusing a bit on the latest prediction out for this hurricane season, which is from Colorado State University. So we'll be looking at the numbers they're expecting, as well as the trend in terms of favorability for this hurricane season. So that is in terms of the sea surface temperatures as well as the ENSO. And before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the notification bell so that you never miss an important update. Okay, so starting out with what is happening across the Caribbean, we can see here that there isn't much activity. We see quite a bit of cloud cover coming in from the eastern Pacific over parts of the northwestern Caribbean. So persons within some of those mainland territories could be experiencing some overcast conditions, maybe with a brief shower or so. But for the rest of the region, we have those dry conditions being quite prevalent, and that is helping to suppress any major convective activity. Looking over into the eastern Caribbean, we see some of that activity make its uh, making its way toward the east and so uh, as it passes the lesser antilles it might induce some overcast skies uh, maybe even some brief showers as well so guadeloupe uh dominica martinique saint lucia saint vincent barbados you guys might experience a bit of overcast conditions but for everyone else uh there isn't really much going on there isn't anything major right now as i said we have those very dry conditions that are helping to prevent any major convective activity from um, developing so beautiful sunshine this morning for a lot of us so now let's go ahead and take a look at what colorado state university is predicting for the 2023 atlantic hurricane season so they are calling for a slightly below average season so we can see here that the average number of storms hurricanes and major hurricanes are 14 7 and 3 respectively now colorado state university is calling for 13 named storms off which six could become hurricanes and two two major hurricanes so uh, the reason for this is because uh, even though El Nino conditions are going to be setting in over in the eastern Pacific and that typically results in a lot less activity in the Atlantic sea surface temperatures over in the Atlantic Basin have been quite warm and we'll be looking at an anomaly map very shortly to show that but that is the reason they're calling for a season only slightly below average because one of the key ingredients in tropical cyclone development is warm waters of course uh, that is what helps to provide the moisture that a tropical cyclone needs to get its thunderstorm activity together and all of that so uh, in the case now where we are having these above average temperatures if this is going to be the continuous trend that could actually help to boost activity despite El Nino conditions so that is the reason they're calling for a slightly below average hurricane season this year and also NOAA has updated their ENSO probabilities okay so on our x-axis we have the months of the year we have them abbreviated for example MAM is March April May then April May June May June July and so on and then on the y-axis there we have the percent chance as depicted for either La Nina neutral conditions or El Nino conditions and then uh, there we have the colors to show uh, whether we're talking about La Nina neutral conditions or El Nino conditions and so we can see here that neutral conditions are expected are highly likely uh, throughout this time April May June however as we progress into the hurricane season we see that chance of El Nino gradually increase so it is likely that we're going to be seeing El Nino conditions as we head into the latter part of this year into the peak of the hurricane season and that will probably strengthen as we head to 2024 and that chance of La Nina extremely low and a pretty low chance for neutral conditions so that is the general trend we're seeing here so an increase in probability of us seeing El Nino conditions and again if you're not too familiar with what an El Nino is it's basically when uh, waters across the equatorial Pacific are warmer than normal and because of that there is more thunderstorm activity over there that helps to increase the wind shear over in the Atlantic basin so as a result of that increase 
increase in vertical wind shear, uh, we typically see less activity during a uh, hurricane season because what that does is really displace activity from anything trying to develop. For example, we might have a storm, but because of the vertical wind shear, as, a, as the thunderstorm activity develops, it is pushed away. It's displaced from the center. And because there isn't that concentration of activity, we eventually don't see any uh, major development or intensification with systems. So that is the typical influence of El Nino conditions. But going on to the sea surface temperature anomaly map. So as we head to the warmer colors, that is indicating that the sea surface temperatures are above normal. White means things are pretty much normal. Meanwhile, the blue means below normal. So across the North Atlantic, generally, we can see that the sea surface temperatures are above average. Still not favorable, but quite warm for this time of year. Of course, we're going to be seeing a gradual uh, warming overall as we progress into the summer months. And especially the Gulf of Mexico, that's usually a hotspot each hurricane season that helps to brew some very major storms that make landfall along the Gulf Coast. But take a look across the Caribbean and tropical Atlantic. We can see that things are pretty much normal and uh, a bit below average for some areas, a little bit above average for some areas, mainly the Northwestern Caribbean. So I wanted to talk about this briefly as well. So if it's going to be the continuous trend where uh, sea surface temperatures in the Caribbean are below normal, that is going to help to result in weaker cyclones and not help to brew any major ones. So that is if we have that trend of below normal temperatures in the Caribbean. So guys, uh, that could mean some good news for this hurricane season. But remember that less activity doesn't mean that there will be none. And less activity also doesn't mean that there won't be anything major. Because last year depicted that at perfectly with E. And it was a very uh, slow season compared to what was anticipated yet there was a major cyclone that was the talk of the year and did record breaking damage so guys that is what is going on right now that is what is anticipated for this hurricane season and of course i'm going to be keeping you updated as time goes by so if you have any questions feel free to leave them down in the comments and you can also share thoughts there and of course remember to always be otherwise